You know, for the past few weeks, I've been having this recurring nightmare. I mean, I haven't been sleeping well anyway, but... I'm in this room, surrounded by candles, all wooden, all carved, and I'm trying to blow the candles out. But every time I blow one out, the others light up. And there's this doll, this plastic baby doll, and it's melting. So I'm trying to blow the candles out. I keep blowing, but the doll keeps melting. And I can hear the sea. Oh my God. It's better than a website. <laughs> Isn't that such a strange dream? So and there's the kitchen. And the downstairs bathroom. And look. This is the upstairs. Yeah. Oh, it's glorious. It's great. Aren't I clever? It's just what we need. Somewhere to finally relax. <laughs> great house. It is a great house. Let's buy it. What? Harry, you and your sister have been left a lot of money. You need to start thinking about investments. Honey, it's only been a couple of months. Yeah, I know. But you need to start thinking about these things. We haven't even stayed the night here yet. Anyway, it's not for sale, is it? I thought it was just rental. <laughs> no, it is. It is for sale, and they need to sell it. Ollie's mum's in rehab and her dad's in prison. They're poor. We'd be doing them a favour. Right. You like it, don't you? Well, yes. Well, it's a fabulous investment. That's why Ollie's dad bought it in the first place. Just he screwed up elsewhere. But he was right about the house. It's a great house. It's a very nice house. What are you doing? Uh, nothing. We were just talking We about... were just thinking that we might buy the place. Oh. Stones represent problems. Maybe you're constantly trying to smooth things over, make everybody happy. It's true. I think your subconscious is telling you to stand up more. Shit. Y you think so? Morning. Morning, babe. <laughs> What's this? Nothing. But you said shit like it was a big deal. I had a bad dream last night, and Ollie was just interpreting it for me. Can you do that? Yeah, no, from my mum's side. I had a really nasty dream last night as well. Tell me yours first. Everyone was talking like dogs. The whole town. And all the barking was making me crazy, so I start to run, and I fall, and I land in gravel. I start telling jokes to the gravel, and I start to get desperate, trying to reach each piece. And when I stop, I can still hear people outside, and they're still barking like dogs. So, what does it mean? Just general anxiety. 
What was yours? But... No, 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 go on. Okay. I had this really terrible nightmare, actually. I'm at home. Um, our old house, the one we lived in with Dad in D.C. Only it's not a house, it's an alley. A really tiny alley. And there are people walking past me, and I'm scurrying around their feet like an invisible mouse. And sometimes the alley gets smaller, and I have to push the walls apart. But I can't stand up. And then the people are walking over Mom's picture, the one I really love. And I'm crying. And then I look down and I'm standing, but I thought I couldn't stand. And I'm standing on glass in bare feet. And there's blood on my feet. Tell me what it means later. I, I have to go pee. <laughs> What, Stephen? I mean, this dream, it's just really got to me. If you have a problem with her, say something. Yeah, I will. I will. Just stop pestering me, okay? The last thing I need is pressure from you. Well, if you don't want my opinion, then don't ask. Shit. Hey, how'd you sleep? Good. What's wrong? I don't know, this dream. I just feel like something's preying on me. Go on. Okay, well, last night, last night you said you wanted to buy this place. I just think you should reconsider. Why? Because, no, forget it. No, go on, say it. You don't want this place. I mean, it's crazy. She just... What? She's a bully, and she has you wrapped around her little finger. All right, enough, Megan. No, it's not enough. She's a controlling bitch, and ever since Dad died, she's been planning how to spend our money. I would never talk that way about Stephen. He would never give you reason to. Look, Harry, you're my brother, and I love you dearly, but... This has been churning away inside of me ever since I had this dream last night, and only just... I mean, she put her finger on it, she... I've spoken to the solicitor. He'll put an offer in for the asking price. Shit. I heard what you said. Good. Dreams. You were talking about dreams. Would you like to hear mine? I, um, I dreamed I was in a, in a beautiful house. A dream house. But I needed to pee, so I, I got up. And I thought I was sleepwalking, because I saw you two talking. And there were candles. You'll sleep well tonight. I always slept well in this house. I had a weird dream earlier. Really weird. <laughs> so the, um... The plastic fisherman, right? Down on the quayside. Mm. I'm in love with it. <laughs> Seriously. The plastic fisherman. And we have a date. And there's a, like a table and wine glasses and everything. And I'm talking to him. Telling him about dad. And the service. And how the band played. And then I'm singing to him. And all the people passing by are looking at me like I'm crazy. And there's t 
tears streaming down my face. And then Megan rushes in and she says, Dad's not dead. He's in Amsterdam. And I'm shouting down the phone to him, liar, liar, liar. Maybe if the fisherman is your father. You think? Did he fish? Yeah, sure. With you? No, never. We're always going to someday. Just me and him. Maybe that's what I was asking him to do. Why he was dressed as a fisherman. But, but in the dream, he can't hear me because this damn seagull keeps squawking. Okay, so, come on. You say you're into all this stuff. Okay, we just met tonight. I trust you. Tell me the truth. Mm, well, it's a warning, possibly danger. You're warning yourself. Look, you seem... What? It's not my place to say it. You seem... Like you're angry at your father for dying. And you wanted his love. Yeah, but the, the table and the date and the squawk and the seagull. Maybe the date is with the seagull. And that aggressive squawking that it's doing is stopping you from concentrating on what you need to concentrate on. It's your grief. And you kissed her. She kissed you back. And you had sex. And I sat and I, I realized it was very cold. And I checked my watch. And it was four in the morning. And it wasn't a dream. Was it? <laughs> So I'm trying to blow the candles out. I keep blowing, but the doll keeps melting. And I can hear the sea. <sighs> Isn't that such a strange dream? Harry? Say something. I, I don't know what to say. I thought it was the house. Losing this house, I thought that was the baby I was trying to protect. I guess I was just never that good at interpreting dreams. I think, subconsciously, you feel very pressured. You feel as if your family is being invaded and smashed and taken over. You're so right. Newcomers. It's Pippa, isn't it? That's not for me to say. She's very controlling. Look, I... I wish to hell you'd gotten in touch sooner, but... I mean, the, look, this is all a shock, but... Just... Don't worry. Financially. I didn't come for the money. And I know the situation with Pippa. Is she still? Yeah. But, um, I'm expecting her. The, the doctors say any day now. Will you tell her? Of course. 
but not just yet. She, uh, she still needs to rest. I just, I thought you should know. You have my number. Goodbye, Harry. <laughs>